My name is Steve Campbell. I'm December's real world titan. Grew up, born and raised in Northern Virginia outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, right out of high school, went in the military. Used the tech training I got in the military to get out and start a tech career. And, uh, you know, as I got a little older, you know, you got to stay sharp with your skills and whatnot. And I just uh, wanted to try something different, wanted to open my own business. I've always been a, had a passion for health and sports. And I went into a Max Muscle store in Cupertino, California, where I live. Got some protein and then they put, they have these magazines. They're really marketing vehicles, the magazines themselves. Again, I'm unemployed at times, so there's like franchise opportunities available. And I'm like, huh. And I just had this feeling I want to kind of take in control, pa you know, uh, succeed or fail. It was going to be on my own thing. It took me a while to get it going, but I started in uh, 2010. And uh, I just recently sold the business and retired. In the summer of 2020, I was having some problems, intestinal pain. It finally got so bad that I, I called the doc. You know, you call the advice nurse and my, my call's getting escalated up. And she says, you know, it sounds like colitis. And they find a big fat tumor in my rectum, cancerous tumor. So I had stage three uh, rectal cancer. Like, okay, they took out the cancerous tumor, they took out the rectum, they took out part of the intestine, and I thought I was cancer free. I went in for about a six month checkup, the cancer had come back. The first diagnosis was stage three in the rectum. The next diagnosis was stage four, it had spread to the liver and the lungs and the lymph nodes right here in the middle. They only have so many drugs, you know, and you'll go through a cycle, maybe two or three months. They do a PET scan where they can see the cancer and uh, they just see if the drug is working. And they call it, you know, are you a responder? Are you responding to the drugs? And um, if not, they go to the next one. But they only have so many. They only have maybe five or six. So you only go through, maybe you go this through a year and a half. So I've gone through the complete cycle of all, everything that's available, right? And it's... Uh, me and, me and cancer, we have each other by the throat, okay? And we're gonna see who wins. You, you can do what they call recycling. And recycling is when you go back onto one of the drugs you previously had done, and uh, maybe to just extend your life a little bit, right? Just one that presumably worked better than the others. One yeah, you'd maybe, I don't know how they would pick it out, right? Um, but the doc, I mean, we're one or two drugs ago, <laughs> He says, I'm starting to run out of bullets here. I'm starting to, I said, all right, doc, let's do what we do. Now, in the meantime, I've started up, you know, I've done a lot of research. I, I look at the internet and, you know, I'm not just looking at any kind of yahoos out there talking about cancer. I've read books and there's some doctors that talk about this stuff. And there's some people that have helped themselves or supplementation. There's, I mean, you can eat, and this is not a joke. You can eat different types of seaweed and algae. And there's been some positive effects with people and cancer patients. So I watched this one, yeah, this one guy is uh, interviewing this guy that had stage three rectal cancer. And he went through the same route. You know, he gets the a diagnosis, goes in and sees a doctor. Doctor's ready to set him up for chemo and radiation. What he does, he goes, hold that thought. He goes home, talks to his wife. They have a kind of a week where they're just trying to mentally deal with things. And I'm getting all this information from his video, if you, you know, I could reference it. But um, after he does a lot of research, he, he does a 21 day fast, okay? And he goes back in and his cancerous tumor in his rectum shrunk by 50%. So I, I saw this, I said, okay, I'm gonna try this, right? I'll try it, I'll try a fast. The fasting basically is like there's no food. You're not taking in any calories, okay? You drink all you want. And that's how you, that's how you get through the day, you're drinking so it can cure your hunger, your, your feeling for hunger. And let's understand something. You're not in physical pain. You're just hungry, right? And a lot of that's up here. There's a lot of people out there that have fasted and they're big fans of it, right? And I remember calling this one friend and you don't know about this guy's name is Kevin and he's, I, you know, he's just talked about fasting. I, he talked about like five or six years prior, he talked about it. I remember calling him, I said, hey, I'm on your diet now. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, well, I'm fasting. And he goes, oh, you know, after, after 10 days, you won't even feel hungry. Well, he's full of crap. It was really funny. The first day you want to kill your children. I mean, you know, you're really, it's not a fun, you know, but you just get through the day. And if you just get to sleep, you're not miserable while you're sleeping, you know. What I'm trying to achieve, I'm trying to use a process called autophagy. And autophagy is when you can get the cells to commit suicide. 
That's what it's doing. The cell's eat, destroy, eating itself. And I was trying to use that autophagy to try to kill uh, the cancer cells. The problem is you can't discriminate. You can't hack it where leave the muscle cells alone. Don't do the brain cells. No, every cell in the body that's weak is going to die. I got to, uh, you know, I got to seven days and I got to 10. And I remember the guy telling them, friend, the fasting guy friend, he, you know, I remember getting to like day 10 or 4, I think it was right around day 14, I finally got over feeling a little miserable. Okay, so I would just go day after day after day. I'll say this one thing just to kind of cut to the end for a sec. The one negative thing I felt was fatigue. There was a day, there was two days out of, I gotta put, a, I gotta be honest, I know you did a video earlier, you kept saying 40 days. I actually went 39. So truth in advertising, it was 39 days. Sorry, <laughs> I'll explain that. Um, but uh, I got to, you know, day 14, but oh, I'm sorry, the fatigue. Um, there was a day I, I had a full night's sleep. I walked in, I almost, I just fell on the couch in my so I opened the door, unlocked the door, turned, flipped the lights on and just fell down on the couch. I just laid there. Sometimes customers would walk in and go, you okay? Yeah. Oh, and I just, yes, the meds I'm on, you know, it's like, you know, I'd play it off. But I had some serious fatigue issues, but it only hit me twice really bad, you know. Um, sometimes I was over at my uh, little desk, kind of table thing we have in the store, and I would just be, you know, yeah. and I could hear the door open up, and I'm just like, you know, hey, how you doing, <laughs> you know, yeah. PET scan on day 39, I did it in the morning, like 8 o'clock in the morning, went to work. Uh, he called me that night, the doctor, the oncologist called me that night, and he said, yeah, your cancer is just, hasn't slowed down. Uh, now, who knows as to what the effect it had. We, you know, we don't know if it would have grew worse, less, whatever, we don't know. Um, and he kind of said, you know, you can still fast if you want. Uh, it seems kind of pointless, but it, there was a little bit of a religious connection, faith connection with 40 days. I think anybody is a faith person, Christian, they know what, 40, what 40, fasting 40 days is about. Um, but I said, to, I remember on the phone, Getting the news, I thought, yeah, I, I think I'll just go get something to eat. You know, I'm kind of hungry, right? And I want to be very, very honest and sincere about this, okay? When I got out of surgery, okay, February of 2021, obviously it took one or two months to recover to where I could, I started going out on these hiking trails. And I remember walking out my car, walking through the, the little park land, and I was starting to go up a trail up a, up a hill. And I wasn't feeling too good, and I said, just, just turn around and walk back to the car. And I did, but I'd go out there again and again and again. I got a little farther, a little farther until I got to the top of the hill, which is 4,000 feet up. And it's a total eight mile loop, okay? And I got to where I could do the whole eight miles like I used to, okay? I started uh, jogging around the track up at the junior high school. I was trying to meet my old standard when I was in the army of two miles, okay? And I'm, uh, 60 years old, going on 61, and I got to where I could run two miles. I didn't obviously, you know, meet the time standard that an 18-year-old meets, right? But I could do that. I had some weights in the backyard. I was doing. I felt really good. And this is where I want to kind of be very honest and transparent. When I got the second diagnosis of stage four, I got very depressed, and I stopped working out. I mean, I just, you know, and then other types of chemo drugs would just take it out of me. Now I'm working, I'm working seven days a week at my store by choice, right? I mean, I could have hired someone, but you know, I wanted to pay off some bills and I just want to make sure to the audience, I know this is, this is, it was a decision, you know? Um, but I got really fatigued. In fact, today is we're in the second or th first or second week in December right now, 2022, the last month, the last couple weeks it was probably the hardest chemo, the side effects of chemo. And they're just pills. I haven't had a, a drip in, I don't know, a couple months. But I was taking these chemo pills. I, I, I was like an 80-year-old man trying to climb out of my car. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, I worked out and I did all this. No, I was just, it's, you know, I'm just trying to get up every day. Yeah. So I've got what's called chemo-induced neuropathy. So when I was on these drugs for the last three weeks, not only did the neuropathy kick up even more, but there was pain. So now I'm kind of limping around. I got to be careful of my balance. I could easily fall over. 
and I just looked like uh, I was walking around with blisters on the bottom of my feet. You know how you see those people just limping along. And uh, so I'd been off that drug now. I'm kind of on, right now I'm on a break. Not right now I'm on a break. Um, and they're thinking about some of the tumors have really advanced on the lungs and they're thinking about getting me back into radiation and I'm asking for it. I'm like, just lay me on the table and just, you know, hit me with the ray gun. You know, I don't care. Uh, you can burn up half my heart if you want. Just <laughs> kill that tumor, kill that cancerous tumor in Tahiti and it is in, I don't know, the Keys in Florida. I don't need to go, I don't have the bucket list. I don't need to run around the world and do crazy shit. You want to see friends and have memories. Yeah, that's it. I just, you know, I'm kind of a low maintenance kind of a, you know, entertainment guy, you know, I just, I don't need to do crazy stuff, you know. What would you say to someone else who's in the same situation you are struggling with? It? To me, um, you've taken everything in stride and rolled with it and kind of gone, like I said, after the fast, you okay, what's next? Yeah. Not, not like, okay, well, I'm going to succumb to it, accept it. You've never, you accept, this is, I don't want to project. Right. To me, you've, you accept it. You're not in denial. Right. But you're also, I'm in the fight, and that's something I'm doing, but this is going to be my life, too. How, how, do, you, how do you get your mind there? Is that something you just, is well, part of your personality? What do you, what do you tell someone who's dealing with this right. and is it, it, struggling? So I want to make a real quick clarification on the people when I made the case of some people just accept it. There's, and, and folks know this. You've probably got relatives in your family. You know, an 80-year-old or an 85-year-old uncle father, mother, whoever, grandma gets it. Sometimes the chemo is harsher than anything else. You know, like, like I've lived this long, I've had a good life, you know, that, and so I want to put that in context. Other than that, if you still are fairly young, you know, uh, and let, you know, it's just, you just want to, I don't want to say this, you have to fight. You have to fight and that's it. And, uh, you know, what are you willing to do? Um, and it's just, it's, I, I'm kind of using the same attitude that I had in my business, and that's never quit. And I got to say, you know, I didn't have this kind of constitution when I was a young kid. I didn't have this, you know, I mean, um, believe it or not, in the last 10 years, we've had a lot of things happen in our history of our country with special forces, and they've been in the news because there's been the conflict overseas. It's, you know, Afghan, and you see all these little documentaries, and you see these like Navy SEALs and these guys, and these special forces guys, and it's like, you just don't quit. You just don't quit. And it's like, okay, I'm not quitting. You know? I kind of joke around. I, I, I do a lot, I try to use a lot of humor to get through this. And I say, well, maybe God knows that I'm just, I'm not going to handle retirement too well. <laughs> I'm like, I have to do a lot of things to try to joke about it. But, um, you know, it's just that I'm not the first guy to get cancer, right? I never, from, from the start, I never got into the pity party. I never got into God, why me stuff. No, I refuse, absolutely freaking refuse to get into that because you go off, you have your little pity party, you cry, you break down, and you, you know, talk to God and maybe blame him, I don't know. But, uh, and then when you're done, where are you? You're still sitting there with cancer, right? Mm -hmm. No, that ain't, that's not happening to me. I mean, here's the thing. This is what's not fair in the world, is when a little six-year-old gets it. They never had a life. You know, I've had a life, you know. Do I want a little bit more life? Yeah, hell yeah. But, you know, we don't, we don't always get to choose, right? We don't get to choose the time and the place. So, uh, I'm down for the fight. When you get diagnosed with cancer, you know, everybody handles it differently. It depends on where the stage are in your life. I, I mean, I've heard of, not personally know, but I've heard of, you know, people sort of accepting it and go like, well, I'm old, I don't feel go like going through this. And they just sort of like, okay, I'm ready to go. Or other people, you know, you just put on the fight. I mean, you just get into the fight. Whatever analogy, metaphor, you know, like whether you want to think of yourself in a foxhole and you know, everybody, everything firing at you is cancer, right? All right, come on, let's go, you know? You just do it if you want to live, you know, and that's it. It's like I'm 62. Um, I just retired, just sold my store. And, uh, you know, I'd like to have a few years.